All right, so uh, the second step in defining our FE model is to define the property. So this is the property module. So in the property module, you can define pretty much two things. You can define uh, the material. So this is this icon here that says create material and you can define the sections, all right? So we we'll go ahead and start with the first thing that is creating the material. Uh, in our example, uh, we are going to model pretty much all our uh, elements. Uh, that is the, uh, the column, the beam and the plate uh, using uh, a single material. This is an S355 steel material. And we are going to assume just for simplicity that uh, the material has a bilinear uh, behavior as the one that we see here with some hardening slope. And over here, I'm listing the values for the modulus of elasticity uh, in MPA. Again, this is MPA, which is uh, equivalent to Newton per millimeter square, which are Newton a millimeter, the units that we are using. And this is the Poisson ratio. This is the value of the yield stress. This is the value of the F, uh, ultimate stress that I'm assuming. And this is the value of the uh, strain uh, at ultimate uh, stress. Uh, epsilon u, uh, which I'm assuming 0.18. So let's go ahead and define those in Abacus. So as we mentioned, we are going to select create material. And here we need to provide a name for the material. So let's call it uh, S355 steel. You can also provide a written description of the material. If you have like a large model and you have too many materials, Perhaps you want to provide something like a text description so that when you refer back to that, uh, you have a better understanding of what this material represents. Like for instance, here I can say that, uh, so you just go here to the pencil here to the edit description and you can say for instance, that uh, this is a bilinear elastic plastic material with a hardening slope that's it so now whenever i come back to this material now i have an understanding of what this is uh, very quickly without going into the details of the material so what you need to define you have different uh, so right now the material behaviors are will be shown in this window right now you have nothing defined yet and then you have all these uh, uh, toolbars to define the different uh, properties of the material. So you have general properties like defining density, user defined materials, other things. You have mechanical properties, uh, elasticity, plasticity, and under each one of those, you have a bunch more others. So too many, too many uh, damage, uh, mechanical properties like to define damage, brittleness, too many uh, again mechanical properties this is for thermal properties this is for electrical and magnetic properties of the material so again too many options so you have to be specific here what we want to define so starting from the general there is a density option actually the density here is not relevant because the analysis that we are conducting as part of this tutorial we are going to conduct a static analysis so in the static analysis the density which is essentially the mass doesn't really matter so i don't need to define the density density matters if you're doing some kind of dynamic analysis or explicit using the explicit solver so in this case you would need the density but here density is not uh, uh, fundamental to our model but in any case it will not hurt to define density so let's define it anyway so if i click on density so now you get this dialogue and pretty much you select the distribution of the density across your pretty much cross section. So I'm going to use uniform, nothing uh, particular here. And then you need to provide the mass density. And this has to be again in the same units of your model. So in my case, this would be like the, we're using Newton and millimeter. So that would be like kilogram, second and millimeter. So this would be the units of the mass. So in this case, uh, if you do the computation, so that would be 
e to the power negative 9 so using the our units so this will be the mass density and that's it uh, you don't need to click ok if you click ok you'll close the entire thing but we still need to add additional material behaviors so i go next to the mechanical properties i'm going to define the elastic branch of my uh, material and then if i go to elasticity there are again many many options hyper elasticity hyper foam porous elastic viscoelastic so uh, in our case this is just the simplest form of elasticity that is the elastic option so if i click on that uh, then here you are asked to uh, define the type of elasticity again there are many types of elasticity depending on the type of material is it isotropic is it orthotropic and anisotropic traction so on so in our case uh, this is an isotropic material it's steel so i keep it as it is i don't change that i don't need to put anything uh, with respect to time like something that changed with respect to time i don't need to consider that I don't have any limits with respect to compression and tension because again this is steel so it carries the same in compression as it does in tension so I don't need to modify anything here. And then uh, the main parameters that I need to modify uh, to add is the Young's modulus E which in my case I'm assuming 200,000 megapascal which is also 200,000 newton per millimeter square so these are my units. So you have to be very very careful with the units that they are all consistent. And for the Poisson ratio, I'm assuming a Poisson ratio of 0.3. Uh, you will notice here as well, like in addition to the main parameters, there are also sub options. Like you can modify, like uh, you can add like a failure strain or a failure stress at which the material will fail. So these are all options that you can add. Uh, I will not add here in my model, but as you will see, this is a very common thing in Abacus. There are always additional more advanced options but always when you are trying to get to know abacus first try with the basic features okay with the basic properties and then later on you can start uh, experimenting with other uh, options so this is the elastic branch this is done now i go again to mechanical again and then i will need to select the plasticity under plasticity i need to select the first one again these are, there are other ones like clay plasticity, concrete, if you are modeling concrete, drucker bragger uh, models, more column plasticity. So in our case, we're just, again, selecting the first option, the, the most basic option, which is the plastic. And here you need to define the hardening, the type of hardening. So I'm not going to go through this, like what's a, what is isotropic hardening, what is kinematic hardening, and what is combined hardening. But in our case, in, in the example that we are trying to analyze, we are actually doing uh, linear, uh, sorry, not linear. Uh, we are doing a monotonic static analysis. So we are just applying loads monotonically. So it doesn't matter really the type of hardening. Is it isotropic or kinematic? This doesn't matter. So I'll just keep it as it is. But if you're doing something that you are applying like cyclic loads, uh, so instead of monotonic loads, you're applying cyclic loads on your uh, steel material. So perhaps you want to now to go more into this and figure out which type of hardening you want to model. Uh, ideally, when you're doing cyclic hardening, the most comprehensive option would be combined. So this is the combined isotropic kinematic uh, hardening. Uh, I will put some uh, links in the description for some uh, papers that you can check on how to characterize the parameters uh, of the material for this combined hardening. So this is very, very important if you are modeling cyclic, uh, uh, the material under its cyclic uh, strains. So I'll stay with the isotropic. Again, I don't, I'm not using strain rate dependency. I'm doing static analysis. So there is no time involved. There is no strain rate involved. I'm not doing any temperature dependent data, but again, if you use temperature dependent data, so as you see, if I click that, you will get additional uh, column here in this table uh, for the temperature. So whatever the yield stress that you specify, you need to provide the equivalent uh, temperature. So if you are doing thermal analysis. So right now I just need to provide the yield stress. And in my case, this is 
would be 355 MPa or 355 Newton per millimeter square. The plastic strain at this yield stress is zero. So this is the plastic strain. So since this is the onset of yielding, so I don't have any plastic strain at this point. So right now, if I keep things like this and then I click OK, so what I really defined in this case uh, would be an elastic, perfectly plastic material. Okay, but in our case, we want, as we mentioned, we want to have a hardening branch. So we need to add another entry in this table. So if you click Enter, I need to add another entry here to define the, pla the plastic branch. So here, this would be the next uh, value of stress. So this would be uh, the second value of stress. So this would be the ultimate stress, 470. So I would put 470. And then I need to provide the value of the plastic strain that corresponds to this 470. Based on my problem here, I'm saying that the total ultimate strain at corresponding to F ultimate is 0.18, but this is the total strain. Abacus is asking me here to provide the plastic strain, so I need to subtract from this from this total ultimate strain, I need to subtract epsilon y. And epsilon y here, you can compute it here uh, yourself on Excel, this will be pretty much uh, Fy divided by E, you can get epsilon y, and then if you subtract epsilon y, subtract epsilon y from epsilon ultimate, you can get the plastic strain, uh, which uh, I think would be here like around 1.78. So that would be the value. Uh, by the way, this is the true stress strain behavior. So not the engineering stress strain behavior. Again, if you check online, there are many if you don't know the difference between an engineering stress strain and a true stress strain, there are lots of tutorials that you can find in videos, and perhaps we are going to go through this later on in the tutorial series about the difference between the two. But in any way, in Abacus, you always provide the for uh, uh, the steel here when you are trying to define it, you define the true stress strain uh, parameters. Uh, if you have the actual true stress strain behavior from uh, an actual test, so with the full nonlinearity, then you can add the entire list, like you can export it, copy it from Excel or something like that, and then paste it here. So you could have the, uh, a more exact uh, behavior of the nonlinear or the plastic part. But for this tutorial, just for simplicity, we are just going to keep it as a bilinear. So now I'm done. Uh, again, you have like multiple things that you can go through for the sub options, but this we are going to go through in a later uh, video. So that's it. I'm just going to click OK. So now I defined my material. Actually, if you go here to the one next to the material that says material manager, if you click on that, it says here. Uh, so now it shows uh, my material that I defined. And if you want to edit that, you can edit. Let's actually do another material that is the uh, material for the bolt so the bolt has a different material so instead of starting from scratch because the material uh, the bolt is also made of steel and so it will have the same density it will have the same modulus of elasticity more or less so i don't want to start from scratch so i can just click here on copy and then i will have a copy for this material and then for this one i will uh, call it uh, steel this is for the bolt so I can call it bolt steel uh, grade 8.8 uh, .8. so I say okay ah yes uh, you cannot uh, you cannot have a dot by the way in the name so that's fine we can have 8-8 all right instead of dot so I go to edit now I edit this one, density will be the same. Uh, the value here, uh, yeah, let's keep it also a bilinear, the same thing. The modulus of elasticity will keep it the same. The values here will be different. So the, the ultimate stress for an 8.8 .8 grade, that would be 800. 
and the yield stress will be 80% of 800, so that would be 640. And uh, we can keep the plastic strain as it is, like, my, of course, it would be different uh, typically for for the steel uh, material grade because this is the highest strength steel, but I will just keep it for now, uh, no need to modify it. Uh, and then I click OK, that's it. So now I defined my material, this is done. So the next thing that we need to define is the section uh, property. So again, we finished with the material, so next we create the sections. So this we are going to discuss in the next video.